Hey folks, it's Rithgar here. How you doing? Welcome to a brand new series of Satisfactory. So I have been generously given a copy of the early access by the devs for this game. And this is something I've been looking forward to for quite a while to be able to take a look at this. It is now in open early access. So you're also able to go onto Epic Games Store and you can purchase a copy for yourself and start having a look at it. This really does look really good. I, As many of you know, I love playing Factorio. And this game is seems to be based on that. But we, you, you essentially, it's first-person Factorio. That's what we've got right here is first-person Factorio. And it's absolutely wondrous. And it says continue because I have actually gone and I played it a little bit myself. Just to try and get used to it. Because I wanted to like at least get the basics underway. Um... And, ah, uh, it was such, it really was, it was genuinely difficult for me to tear myself away from this in order to be able to keep going. So, what are we going to call this? We'll call this little world Frith Guardia. Uh, there we go, like that, a private session. Uh, and it you can do multiplayer versions with this, you can if you want to, uh, but that's this not something that we're going to be after. Now, I'm hoping I got the noise levels right. I have, of course, switched all music off, just in case. And it does guide you fairly nicely through the opening stages of the game as well. There's a couple of little bits that weren't all that obvious, at least Attention, for me. Attention Pioneer. The following instructional video is a summary of your impending duties as an exoplanetary pioneer for Fixit Incorporated. Fixit Pioneers have three cyclical assigned pillars of work to ultimately accomplish project assembly. Use provided blueprints to build the necessary buildings. Chart the planet and gather resources to provide desired results and improve your infrastructure. Make sure to report any unusual discoveries to R&D for analysis. <laughs> Expand your factories, outposts and pipelines through automation and augmentation. That's it. Get to work and be effective. I don't Warning. Think... Planet fall imminent. Please remain seated during full procedure. Atmospheric entry in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Planet fall procedure initialized. suit is at 100%. Remember, efficiency first. Godspeed. Okay. Now that was slightly different to the one that I had last time. Welcome to Planet Massage 2 ABB, your designated sector in the binary star system of Akicha. I am Ada, also known as Artificial Directory and Assistant, tasked to support pioneers such as you in their mission. You are the third of your sector to survive Planetfall. Congratulations. <laughs> I remember that bit. Note, objective-based introduction initialized. Welcome to onboarding. Third to make it, basically. First objective. Please dismantle the drop pod. The resulting materials will be repurposed to construct a habitat and utility base from now on referred to as the hub. Note, fix it incorporated as cost effective and efficient. We do not waste. All right, so we've got those things there flying around in the sky. 
And at the moment, I think they're just decoration. That thing down there is just kind of a giant... Uh, you can attack it if you want to. It doesn't really do anything. And then you see those there moving around? Those are actually dangerous and they can hurt you. So we want to stay away from those at the moment. We'll stay up here out of the way. We don't have a self-defense item either to use at the moment. And there is other things that we're going to want to find. So it is fortunate that I have played a little bit of this because... Uh, like the very basics, um, I did find, like I said, it wasn't all that easy, but um, some of that opening sequence, I didn't get that on my first playthroughs. Like it was, there was a fair bit of it that I didn't actually get. Anyway, what we need to do is we need to press F to enter dismantle mode like that and then press and hold to dismantle and we've got one hub parts. Incoming message. Second objective. Please ensure you have your Fixit Incorporated Xeno Zapper equipped before leaving the drop zone. Note, according to Fixit regulations, every pioneer should have access to a means of defense against extraterrestrial threats. Oh, you already got it. So we double click on there and that puts it into the hand right there. Third objective, please familiarize yourself with the resource scanner to find iron. Note. The acquisition of iron is considered essential in preparation for all future objectives. We press C to scan for deposits, uh, press E to gather resources from deposit, and we need iron as kind of the top priority, and then we'll also be looking for copper afterwards. So you do that, and it tells you. So we've got 323 meters that way we've got iron. 399 that way, 330 meters that way, there's none behind us. So despite the fact that it looks absolutely gorgeous up here, there isn't actually anything of use. We want to go down there. We can't just jump off. That does actually hurt. I've already tested that. <laughs> of course I have. I, I, I am Frithgar. This is what I do. This consumable possesses minor healing properties. Further analysis required to establish object scanner identification. So that will come later, the, the object scanner. Don't worry about that for a minute. This is not something that we want to worry about. But I will just gather up a few of them because they are something that we do want to use. So I'm, I'm also going to gather up some of these leaves here because, again... Something that we don't need to worry about at the moment, but it is something that we do want to use. And it's something that I know now that I need to use it. And therefore, I'm going to gather some just to make our life a little bit easier as we progress along. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of one Initial of those... scans reveal colouring properties in the flower petals. Further analysis required. There's something else I picked up. Uh, we know it, it's one of those things that's just kind of um, you don't realize to start with when you first begin playing the game. But then afterwards and you have to go back through and you have to pick them up again. So I'm not really like skipping any steps by picking these up. Um, and you know me now with games anyway. I tend to just go and gather anything and everything that I absolutely can when I start playing a game. Uh, the, the dangerous things, we don't actually need to worry about them. They're not that dangerous. They're just a bit of a jolly nuisance, more than anything else. Right, so we could go over that way, or we can head this way. It's 200 meters down here. I'm thinking down here. Um, long term, it might be useful. There's those there as well, barrel nuts. This consumable possesses minor healing properties. Further analysis required to establish object scanner identification. And we'll keep wandering down over here. You can run for most of it, but occasionally you don't want to run. Occasionally you do just want to go a little bit slow because you find these great big brutes right here. And these things are a, a, an absolute pain, right? They, they knock you flying like that, but you can get them as well. You zap them with this thing. I think you've got to hit them like three times and then you get the alien carapace. Studying the remains of this creature might shed light on how to defend yourself in the future. I recommend analysis. Right, we've got here, we've got limestone. So we've got a couple sections of limestone right there. And um, there's iron down there. I can see a 
some um, some good old iron. And then this guy here, look. Right? You zap him. What he does is kind of run away. Now, I did read on the wiki that if you spend absolutely ages and you do eventually take him down, um, he doesn't drop anything. But what you can use him for is you can jump on his body. Like, it, it, it's just like a giant trampoline. And that's literally the only thing. I, I, I don't think it's worth the effort. So I'm just gathering up some leaves. And there's the iron that we were looking for right there in front of us. It's that bit there. And what we also want to try and find is copper. Now, we've got a beautiful level open area right here, which is going to be incredibly useful. This is, this is something that we're going to want, okay? You need a lot of space in this game, from what I've found. Uh, so it's useful, again, me knowing this before we start, rather than having to find it out afterwards. Um, there is space here. Some of the space is... Like a little limited, but th this is this is a good start. This is a good start here. Now we want to try and get this thing. And what you can do, right, is like that. There, you can jump up over them as they come through. You can leap up over them, and you can get right out of their way. And then you've got that thing up there flying around. He looks really cool. And this is this map is completely different to the one that I did my first sort of run through on. So it does look like the map is generated for each session, uh, you know, for each new map. You don't have, like, a, just one map for each of it. So I'm holding that now. That gives me one health point for each pale berry that I eat. The other one, the, the, the nuts on that tree, like that, those over there, they give you half a thing each time. That one right there uh, can be restores half a health segment. So I'll just put that one back. This, those creatures there that I just fought, that is the only thing that I have found so far, and I haven't found anything else. So, we've got that giant tick whale thing over there. He seems to be stuck. So, I'm curious now. If I go over to him, am I going to, like, is he, is he going to try and go somewhere else? Or can I just stay here and keep zapping him until he goes? I might be able to, you know, I might be able to. Apparently, it takes a very, very, very long time to get him there. Apparently it's a very, very long time to get him. Um, even if you get him stuck somewhere. So, <laughs> okay, I feel really mean doing that, especially as he's pretty much harmless. So I'm going to stop now. I'm not I'm not going to do that. We'll, we'll let him live. So you go up to this and we get our little chisel that we have. And you pick up the pure iron ore Fourth on objective, here. objective, build the hub. Note, to complete this objective, the resources salvaged from the drop pod will be consumed. Caution. Ensure the hub is built on spacious open terrain close to the presence of iron sources. Failure to do so will likely result in non-optimal progress. That is very valuable advice, right? That is very valuable advice. And we've been really lucky here. We've got three iron nodes. And this, this is... Don't worry about it at the moment, but later on you'll find out that this is an iron node that I'm stood on right here. And then that's another one. And we've got a third one over here. Now, the little map that I started with, I had copper wasn't too far away. And I had two iron nodes near me. And I could see having three iron nodes next to us. You wouldn't need it to start with. I don't think it's going to make much difference to start with. But it is something that's going to become very useful. Now, this great big stone here, I can't do anything about that. I don't know if there's something that I can get later on that will help remove that. Um, okay, he hit me. But look how fast they run. There. Okay, he hit me again. There. No. Oh, no, no, no. Right. Wait for him to come back in. And they don't, like, hit you really hard. So you get uh, one hit point of damage each time they come in and hit you. But it can take take a while. There, right. So I got another one of them, but I've taken a bit. I've taken a bit more damage. See, so I'm gonna just go to those barrel nuts a minute, and I'll eat them up there. So I've now got half a point remaining, and I know that I've gone and got the iron. It's, she's told us to do something, but I just want to have a quick. I want to stand on top of this rock a minute. I want to scout around. There's another enemy over there. And I, from what I've seen, once you remove, there's another one there. Once you remove them, you don't actually need to worry about them. And they're not much of a threat once you've removed them initially. 
Um, you know, I'm looking around. No, this this map isn't. I don't think this is the same one that I was on previously. I don't. I, no, I don't. I don't think it is. I, I think this is completely different. So we need to make our um, HUD. You press Q to bring this bit up. We get the hub right here. This is the starting bit, okay? And you press shift to run. Press and hold shift to run, by the way. Uh, we'll come over onto here, and I'll jump up on it. You've got quite a long-range jump on you with your suit that you get. So the hub, there. Now, you can bring that one round. Uh, scroll up and down. That rotates it round. It is actually quite crucial the placement of this one to start with i didn't appreciate just how important that the placement of this one to start with was when i first placed it down and i do now so we're looking to get the absolute best spot for this and i'm thinking there i'm just hoping that i've got that the right way around i think it wants to go that way around because you can't, like, raise it and lower it. You can only just put it onto the terrain. But it's flat down here. So we don't need to worry about it. So I'm going to put that one there. It's just a click. You don't have to click and hold. Um, now, it's immediately saying missing hub Congratulations. parts. Congratulations. You have unlocked hub feature manual craft bench. Hub feature hub terminal. Fifth objective hub upgrade storage and power. Note. The craft bench and hub terminal are essential for progression to the next objective. Uh, it immediately comes up saying that uh, we got missing hub parts and stuff like that. That is because you click and it instantly starts building it and then it's trying to build the second one. Just press Q to come out of that. It's not actually it because like start with I was thinking oh crumbs what have I done wrong here. Uh, but you haven't. You haven't actually done anything wrong. It's just that it immediately goes to allowing you to build a second one if you want to. So we're just going to clear away everything that is nearby. Unfortunately, we can't move these. These are just like part of the map at the moment. And I don't know if there's a way that we can get rid of them later on. I am hoping that there will be. So what we need to do is we come into here, and this is the bit that you'll become familiar with. We've got the craft bench there, and we've got the hub terminal over here. So we look at this one. And we've got tier 0 right there. That is all we've got on there. We can go to active milestones. You click on tier 0 and you've got hub upgrade right there. Right, we need 10 iron rods. That's to do the next hub upgrade. And you've got to work through these. But then you've got all of those to be able... That's like working through the progression of the game. So it slowly unlocks all of these different things. You can't go and look at the new bits... We can look at them on here, and you do quickly unlock everything as you get through there. So we don't need to worry. Actually, what we can do is you can go to here. We click on tier one like that. We click on the hub upgrade there. And then if I select milestone, you'll now see up in the top right-hand corner, we've got hub upgrade, and we need 10 of those. We go to the craft bench, select the recipe in the list on this side. We've got iron ingots. We've got 143 iron ore right there. So we can start crafting like this. Now, you might think that that's going to take us a fair while to be able to do anything. I'm crafting more than we need just for the current milestone because we're going to want more than this. Um, it does take a little while to do it like this. And you can see the yellow square at the bottom is getting more and more yellow as you go through. It does do that. Um... These go a lot faster, turning the ores into other things. It does go a lot faster. We'll make a whole load of those. Uh, that's all I'm going to worry about. So then I come over to this side, like this. Double-click the item that you need in there, iron rod. So if I double-click that there, I've now got all the materials I need on that list. So then I can click Upgrade Hub. Boom. Nailed it. New email received. We've got new buildings, new equipment, incoming messages. Congratulations. You have unlocked hub feature biomass generator. Hub feature personal storage. Scanner feature copper. New equipment, buildings, and blueprints, which can be found in the workshop when built, build menu, and craft bench respectively. Sixth objective, hub upgrade construction. Note, connect buildings to a generator for power. Note, buildings such as the smelter require a blueprint to be set. Advice, 
Automate the smelting process and use portable miners for optimal results. Right, so now we've got a bit of storage space right here. And we'll be able to use it. We'll put those and we'll put those in there for a minute. And then if you come over here, we've got the biomass burner. At the moment, we've got nothing in here, so we don't need to worry about it. This is fuel, right? And you'll need the leaves for that. That's what the leaves are for. And then other biomass that you can get later on. Um, we don't need to worry too much about it. We'll go to here. Our next upgrade is hub upgrade 2. Now, for this one, we need 10 iron plates. We need 10 iron rods. We also need 50 wire. Wire is something else entirely. So we go out of there. Um, you need copper for that one. So we've got to find some copper. We'll also have a look in here. You can now do copper ingot. You can do wire and you can do cable. These are the six primary ingredients for most things that I've unlocked so far in the game. I'm not saying that they're everything, but they're the primary ingredients for most things. So now we've got the craft bench right there. I've already got the craft bench, so I don't need another one. I think that you can make another one if you want to. Uh, the equipment workshop, this requires some plates and some iron bars. This is essential, this is really important. And then we've got the smelter itself, and we need copper to make that one. So the equipment workshop is the one that I want to do next. So I'm just going to go to here a minute, and I'm going to do a few more of those, like that. There, and then I'm going to go to iron plates, like that, and I'll turn all of those into iron plates. There. Um, press E to come out of that. So now I can press Q, and I've go to there and I've now got an equipment workshop that I can place down if I want to and you can put this one you you can literally you can plonk it just about anywhere that you want to it's just kind of where you think it's going to fit best I'm gonna put our equipment workshop down there right next to us fairly close so it's easy to get to easy to reach and then I can just go to here. I don't actually have to go and walk right into it in here and use it if I don't want to. But if you go into there, we've now got a Zeno Zapper in case we lose the one that we've got. And we've got the Portable Miner, which we need cables and we need wire for. So we can't go any further just for a minute. With that bit, we need to go and find the copper. It's already told us what to do. It says so on the side there. Hold C to select what resource to scan for. See that glowing thing up there? We'll worry about that later. That does come into it later. That poor tick thing is stuck on that rock. It might move. Pressing and holding now. Pressing and holding C. We want copper. Now, this is the big thing. 170 meters. 400 meters. 500 meters. So, 170 meters that way is some copper. It's not the closest, but... Copper, we, it sort of tends to spread a bit further apart. What is that? I don't actually know. I've never seen that before. That is... Whatever that is, that's new. Right. You press F for um, moving the scanner around. Yeah, I've definitely never seen these things before. I'm just going to try and find out if there is a thing for a, a, a light or a headlamp or something. Right, V is what you press for your headlight. And so we're going to bring that one over here. We need to make sure that we have our Zeno Zapper equipped before we go very much further because there was another one of the enemies over this way. Um, there's two of them. Two of them is going to be a little bit more interesting than one of them. And they're both running. Oh dear. This, 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 this could actually be problematic. Right, I did take that one down. Get you. Right, okay, I got one of them. I got one of them. I got one. There. And he, he's hit me. Right, I've got him again. And zapped him again. Right, okay, we got both of them. We did get both of them. Just make sure I pick those up. We do want these. We do actually want to gather these up. But I've now taken a considerable amount of damage. You can die in the game. Right, just, just to comfort you, uh, it is actually possible to perish completely in this game. 
I know this from experience. Um, so, yeah, you, you do have to be a little bit careful. Right, we'll eat that lot up, and then we'll re-equip our Xeno Zapper right there. So there's the copper that we're after. If I do a ping again... Is it pinging me? There's the copper that way. Seven... Oh, wait, 76 meters. It's telling me the copper's... So what's the... Oh! That's more iron there. That's that's a pure iron deposit. We'll grab that because that's that's quite useful. Um, the speed that you pick the iron up from one of these pure iron deposits is actually quite impressive. So if we just grab this bit first, there we go. It's a bit of iron, and we need to go and get the copper. The copper is up. We got to get up onto that cliff. That's where we got to go. Scan for copper. There. It's up there on top of that cliff. And we got to get up there in order to be able to get to it. That's not the most convenient of locations, it must be said. But it's not too bad. We, we do have a slope that runs up here. Um, so we can just sort of grab it as we go. Right. And now, of course, we've got to find out if we've got any more aliens up here guarding it yes there is one over there it's a good job i healed myself up right there's he's he's taken some i'm not very good at getting them without taking damage but it's got to be said i'm not very good at getting them without taking damage but here is our copper deposit this is the crucial part now I know I found previously that I didn't actually need that much copper. You know, once you get set up, I only used one copper. I was only using one copper deposit, and we've got it up here. That's going to be fine. I think that will be absolutely fine. I can't see that's going to present any problems for us whatsoever. So actually, I think it's going to be quite good. Is that going to be too far? Yeah, that was, that was a little bit too far to drop. It'll be all right. We'll be fine. As long as we don't get any more Xenos, let's let's go and get some of these pale berries right here. There. And grab that. Another leaf there. He's free! Look, he's finally broken free. I'm so happy for him. He's probably not wanting to see us again, but um I'm I'm still happy for him. Let's put you onto there. And we'll eat those two. And we'll take that one back a minute. Okay, so we have now got our copper. To be able to make the next item is the smelter that we want. We need eight pieces of copper wire to make a smelter. And if we have a look in here, we also want the portable miners. We need eight pieces and we need four pieces of cable. So we're going to need a few pieces of copper. So what we'll do is copper ingots. We got 31. We'll make all 31 copper ingots a minute. And then we turn all of that into wire. There's nothing else that you want to use the copper ingots for to start with. But you do want the actual wire. The wire itself is quite useful. So um, we'll make all of the wire that we can. Now what we don't want to do is we don't want to make too much of that into cable. Because we're only going to want some of that as cable. So I'm going to, at the moment, I'm going to make six. I'll make another ten. We'll make sixteen. There. So we've made 16 of those. Uh, e to get out of that menu. And then I want to go for a smelter. Right. The smelter, this first one here, I'm going to rotate that one round. And I'm going to... And there we have it, folks. I'm afraid I'm going to have to stop things now because we have run out of time. So if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.